I've always been fascinated by batteries and how they store energy. I mean, you feed them a steady stream of electrons and then thanks to the wonders of science, the battery stores that energy as electrochemical energy until you actually need it. Then when you reverse the direction of the electron flow, BAM! Electrical current flows forthwith as electrical chemical energy turns back into electrical energy and ever ready Mr. Kilowatt does your bidding. Yeah, I did see last week tonight. Nightmares were had. All jokes aside, battery electric cars wouldn't be battery electric cars without battery packs. And in the 16 years or so that my primary form of transportation has been an electric vehicle, there have been some pretty big improvements. And today we're going to talk about a relatively new cell chemistry from startup Sela that promises to improve the energy density of lithium ion cells by between 20 and 40%. What's more, that battery technology is going to be debuted in Mercedes-Benz G-Class EV, a vehicle that not only needs a lot of power to live up to the G-Class name, but also needs that delivered in a relatively compact form factor. So today we're going to talk about the Sela Breakthrough Battery, talk about how it's not like most battery startups, explain how Mercedes-Benz is working with Sela on bringing the battery cell to market, and detail what happens next. But first, a reminder that if you like our special blend of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter content, in fact, if it fills you up and leaves you at 4.2 volts per cell, we would love it if you'd consider hitting subscribe and tapping the notification bell, as well as changing your preferences for this channel. And if you want to make sure that our state of charge doesn't drop off a cliff, stick around until the end of the show and I'll tell you how you can help us dump some charge into our battery packs. Mercifully, production electric vehicles no longer use heavy duty deep cycle lead acid batteries and instead, for the most part, they use longer life, more energy dense lithium iron ones. And thank goodness that change happened. I mean, back in the day when lead acid batteries were a lot cheaper to buy and you could usually find a battery specialist in your local town willing to sell you some deep cycle Trojans at a discount if you purchased enough, you usually had to replace your EV's entire battery pack every three to five years. You often had to spend a couple of hours every month watering the cells, if they were the flooded type, to make sure they carried on working. And of course, you had to keep your factory system primed for the inevitable smell of rotten eggs that signified your batteries were on their way out. It was horrible. Honestly, it's no wonder that lead acid batteries did nothing to further the advancement of EVs, at least not on a large scale. Today's modern lithium ion batteries are to the lead acid battery what fibre internet is to AOL dial up. They are capable of incredible rapid charging. They are more energy dense and power dense, meaning they can store more energy per unit volume or unit mass, and they can provide more power per unit mass. And for most EVs, they outlive the car they were placed into. But still, batteries are the Achilles heel of battery electric vehicles. Modern lithium ion batteries aren't as chemically stable as they could be. They require careful thermal management to ensure a long, safe, stable life. And while many automakers and battery specialists are moving away from using cobalt and nickel in their batteries, two elements that raise some significant ethical and environmental concerns over their mining, many EVs still do use batteries containing them. And while it's possible to make a modern mid-sized EV with a range in excess of 250 miles, 400 kilometers relatively easily, the race is on to make sure that battery packs can store more energy in less physical space while being able to charge incredibly quickly and be built from materials that are incredibly stable and more ethically and environmentally responsible. In the past few years, we've seen a number of battery specialists come to the fore, promising a range of different battery cells, ranging from solid states to impressive improvements in current cell construction that improve energy density, charging capabilities, and much more. While you might not have heard of Sela, it's actually a 10-year-old company that started life as a spun-off entity from Georgia Tech. It refers to itself as a materials science company and a materials solutions company. 
It's been working to perfect high silicon content anodes for use in lithium ion batteries and already has a production facility in Alameda, California, where it produces enough silicon rich anode material to power over 10 million small consumer devices. And it's recently announced the start of construction at a brand new location in Washington state, where it says it will produce enough anode materials for up to half a million cars and 500 million mobile phones per year. Which is where Mercedes-Benz comes in. It first invested in Sealer back in 2019, and it's watched as the company has progressed through various iterations of its tech, including a production launch of batteries containing the silicon-rich anode technology in the WHOOP 4.0 wearable health monitor. Having helped play an integral part in Sealer's F-Series round funding, which helped it get $100 million to construct its new Washington State facility, Mercedes-Benz will be Sealer's first automotive client. Sealer states that its silicon anode technology will make an automotive grade battery capable of storing a volumetric energy density of 800 watt hours per litre possible at the cell level. What is volumetric energy density? Well, it literally refers to how much physical energy you can store per unit volume. It's usually referenced in watt hours per liter, but honestly, you can think of energy density as how many lithium ions you can store at the anode when fully charged. So let's use a little analogy to help you understand it in a more tangible way. Think of a platform full of people wanting to get to work in the morning rush hour on a train. Now, trains have a fixed volume, their carriages or cars can't get larger, and only so many people will fit inside if the train has a very traditional seating arrangement or individual compartments for every few seats. But if you change the interior design of the train to remove those private compartments and maybe reorient the seats to allow for more standing space, you'll be able to cram more people inside in the rush hour without changing the physical exterior dimensions of that train. That's essentially what volumetric energy density does. The higher the number, the more people, I mean, lithium ions, you can cram onto that anode when fully charged. Anyway, let's not get too in depth. Now, I should point out that when we consider the energy density at a pack level, that figure will be lower than the one quoted. Since we have to take into account things like power electronics that live outside the cells, but inside the battery pack. However, that volumetric energy density is still very impressive. I mean, as a reference, CATL, C-A-T-L, the world's largest EV battery manufacturer, currently offers a volumetric energy density of over 290 watt hours per liter at the pack level for its LFP cells, as used in its latest cell to pack battery design, and over 450 watt hours per liter for NCM chemistries in cell to pack designs. That out of the way, let's look at what this means for Mercedes-Benz. The more energy dense a battery, the less physical space is required for a given energy capacity, or the more energy you can fit in for a given space. And for the upcoming G-Wagon EV, which we're going to assume will be called the EQG, using as energy dense a pack as possible is kind of important. And I'm not just talking about achieving a range that's ahead of the competition. First off, the G-Class isn't exactly the most aerodynamic car out there. It was never meant to be. Instead, it's designed to go anywhere and do anything. Heavy or large battery packs increase the vehicle's overall weight, which in turn means it has to use more energy to move itself along. But what I think is pretty important here is the fact that the G-Class needs decent ground clearance to keep its original capabilities intact. A battery that is more energy dense means the battery will take up less space under the car and thus hopefully will improve ground clearance. What's more, unlike the overwhelming majority of EVs out there, the G-Class is still a body on frame vehicle, as was the G-Class concept EV we saw unveiled late last year. Being able to fit a compact battery in between the chassis rails is again, a pretty big bonus. Mercedes-Benz has already proven with the EQS that it's capable of producing a very efficient car that has all of the hallmarks of a Benz without 
too many compromises? And we think an electric EQG with a super energy dense battery pack would be the perfect successor to the G-Class that's been in production for literally decades and still remains very much desirable among car aficionados. Additionally, there is a massive bonus for Mercedes-Benz in the way in which the sealer anode system is implemented into battery manufacturing. Unlike many cell chemistries, which require new and more complex production lines, sealer says its anodes can easily be accommodated in existing lithium ion cell production lines with no major modifications required. Not only does this reduce the capital expenditure for any automaker seeking to use those energy dense anodes in its vehicles, but it also makes it easier to adopt the technology without stopping existing production lines for extended periods of time. And of course, with no major changes to how the cells are actually made, there's no extra requirement to spend a lot of time retraining staff on a completely new cell production process. But before you get too excited, I feel that I need to put some caveats into this mix. First, Sealer's factory isn't going to be producing automotive levels of anode material for some time. Think a year or two at best. And secondly, Mercedes-Benz isn't due to bring an EQG or whatever it will call it to market for a few years. And by that time, other automakers may have competing technologies. And I should notice here that both Tesla and BMW have high silicon anodes in their current cell chemistries, although not at the kinds of energy density levels promised here. That's it for today. If you did like the video, be sure to give it a thumb up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. If you want a generalized news roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter vehicles, do check out our news roundup show every weekend. And don't forget, we produce videos every single day on this network for you all to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features to tutorials, unboxings, and reviews. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give that bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew. Go out to the folk on my ride for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. That's Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Ascenter, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month patron supporters. Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Grenin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you'd like to be part of that amazing list, it is super easy. You can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or you can show us your support through Kofi or by buying something from our cool swag store, links below, just like this t-shirt. And if you're unable to support us financially, please know that watching the video and sharing it really does make a difference to our ad revenue. And as we've said in the last couple of weeks, if you are already a Patreon supporter, please do double check to make sure that your credit card hasn't recently expired. We still have over 250 Patreon supporters with expired cards, and their contributions would total up to about 14,000 additional dollars of lost annual revenue. Um, that means we can't do as much as we would normally like to. So thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.